I'm on my way. Woo! Yeah, good morning, and welcome to the stream on my way to the tower as we spake. And uh, look, let's just keep this between us. But I farted in the suit, and it smells horrible in here. So I can't wait to get back to the tower. Look, a lot of fun stuff to get into today. A ton of new information and articles coming out about Michael Waldron, comments about the multiverse, comments about the future of the MCU. And I want to just dive in, man. I want to look at all these different articles. I want to get real sweaty. I want to speculate about Secret Wars, one of my favorite topics. A topic that you'll hear me talk about quite a bit as we head towards Secret Wars. That's right, I said it again already. We can also talk a little bit of Star Wars, I guess. Oh god, I hope not. Okay, I'm pulling into the tower. I'll see you in a second. power. Feel the nerdiness. Feel, feel the vibes. Feel, vibe, vibe it up. Feel, feeling, vibing. V vibe, feeling, feel, catch a vibe. Catch a feeling on a vibe, vibe, vibe it away. What's up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Welcome back to Nerdvengers Towers. Oh, man, it's good to be with you today. I'm feeling good. I hope you guys are feeling good. Let me know in the chat. How are you feeling today, chat? How are your feelings doing for you in the chat? Let me know. Let me know. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited to get into this. Um, I do want to say a couple of different things before we get into the main topics of the day. Um, and it's good to see uh, you guys saying that. <laughs> Everyone's like, hey, some people are doing great and all that. So Some people are doing bad. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, I wanted to say a couple of different things. I think we're going to be doing a change to Wednesdays uh, we have been doing a stream at 7 p.m. at night and we were trying to do like watch parties every Wednesday but I think like yesterday was a perfect example of how like that kind of doesn't really work and a lot of people come into those Wednesday streams for the members like a little bit later um, and it was nice like yes last night's stream was great I had a good time just chilling with you guys but like people come in when they can they can't stay for a whole movie or whatever and it just it feels awkward if they're coming in there and I'm like this like looking at a, at a show or something so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the Nerdvenger streams on Wednesdays to noon and it'll sort of be like just another morning stream but just for members and we'll kick it we'll chill talk about what's going on uh, probably like an hour 45 minutes to an hour and then we'll get out of there and then I think what we're gonna do is every first weekend of the month we will do a Saturday morning watch party for members and we'll watch like some nerdy cartoons or we'll watch a movie or maybe we'll watch a bunch of stuff. Uh, but I think that might work better for a lot of different folks. OK, so, um, you know, let me know. Uh, hit me up like Discord or let me know in chat or whatever if that's a good plan for you guys. I think that's kind of the direction I want to take it in. So, um, yeah, yeah, we'll just kind of leave that there. Uh, I also want to say we got a ton of fun videos on the way for you guys on the regular Dead of Nerds channel. Uh, I have a video about all the different Marvel characters that I think could actually beat the Scarlet Witch. Uh, and I have that coming. Um, you know, shout out to James Heaton uh, and all of you guys really for, you know, helping me come up with some of the fun ideas that I put into the video yesterday uh, about the Illuminati possibly still being alive. So that was really fun. I also recorded a video about the Kenobi leaks, sort of part two on my thoughts on the Kenobi leak. And I got to be honest with you, I, look, I haven't actually gone in there to edit this video at all, but I think it will probably piss off a lot of people. Like it'll piss off a lot of people on the right and it'll piss off a lot of people on the left. 
um, because I sort of like really just break down what my issues are with it, and I kind of like tell a bunch of people that I think they're silly. So uh, if if you get easily triggered. Uh, and if you're like really all about the culture war, I don't know, skip it or watch it and get super mad. I really don't care. But it's a uh, it's a video that I think will really break down why I have a problem with the leaks, why some of the things that are out there that people are like upset about that I'm not upset about, and really kind of get to the heart of some of that issue with the leaks. Um, and honestly, Star Wars is uh, kind of exhausting. To, to cover and to talk about and uh, I don't think you know the the fans are obviously split on a lot of this stuff and I think Lucasfilm does a terrible job of trying to ease those tensions and make uh, make sure everybody feels included and so uh, look I'm gonna try to do my best uh, as we move towards Kenobi to appreciate the good things that I think Kenobi will bring uh, and, and try to appreciate it for what it is and then also just experience the ending for myself and see ultimately how I feel about it. <clears throat> but, you know, I talked about this a little bit last night as well. Uh, I I'm in such a nice, happy place when it comes to Marvel and covering Marvel, and I'm really excited about where the MCU is going. And that's really what we're going to talk about in today's stream. But I find myself at a really weird impasse where I'm not having a ton of fun uh, making Star Wars content or thinking about the future of Star Wars. And so um, I don't know what that means exactly, and I'll try to do my best to uh, be as positive as I can about the coming Star Wars stuff. But uh, you might see, depending on how Kenobi goes, you might see a pretty big withdrawal uh, from Star Wars as far as my content is concerned. Like, I think I'll still cover the shows and uh, we'll still do watch parties, but probably not a lot of singular videos. And a lot of my video time will likely just be dedicated to Marvel and maybe some other things. So just kind of want to throw that out there. Um, it's a weird one, man. It's a really weird one for me. I respect how I respect. Honestly, this is the thing. Like, even though I think both sides of this are really silly and there's like far left people that are like super silly and there's far right people that are super silly. I also like acknowledge that they exist and they feel the way they feel. Um, so it's not even really that I don't get where they're at it's kind of more that lucasfilm does a horrible job of trying to ease any tension that might be created by that situation um and on top of that the content ain't that great you know what i mean just being real like you look at the body of work over the last five six years and it's like there's a few good things in there you know and uh there's a lot of uh wishy-washy wobbly bullshit in my opinion so um kind of kind of kind of a bummer oh yeah i'll always be on nerd theory or at least as far as long as we keep doing the show nerd theory might just be sort of maybe the only place i i choose to talk about star wars moving forward um we'll see you know i'm not i'm not i'm not making any uh, uh decisions today uh but i did want to just kind of put that out there that's that's legitimately where i'm at man that's legitimately where i am at and uh yeah, not uh, not that not that hyped. You know, the wind has really been taken out of my sails for Kenobi specifically, which is kind of a shame. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm giving up on talking about Star Wars. What I'm saying is there is a very real possibility that I will pull back, pull way back. Um, because honestly, man, and like, look, I talked about this a little bit yesterday, but uh, I I don't want to. Like, here's the thing. Schadenfreude is a thing. And I know a lot of people get enjoyment of that. I know there's content creators that love doing that. And maybe they're really good at it, too. And that's cool. You know what I mean? It's not my thing, but it's cool. Um, I'm not that guy. And if I'm honestly in a place where I'm feeling pretty negative towards Star Wars, I would rather not talk about it than make a bunch of videos talking about how much I don't like it or why. So I'm at, a, I'm at that juncture legitimately so we'll see maybe i'm completely wrong maybe kenobi will be straight fire and i'll be like yo i was wrong how could i ever have doubted you kenobi you know uh we'll see we'll figure that out together together but i think the video that i dropped today will probably clear up a lot of like why i feel the way that i feel about uh all that kind of stuff okay so anyway let's get into some positive stuff aka Marvel content. Now, 
Let me pull this up for you. Uh, by the way, yesterday too, I just I just want to say a lot of love uh, to all the Nerd Avengers that showed up on Twitch yesterday. We were a part of a sort of collaboration with uh, Fandom Wire with Paul from Heavy Spoilers, and we had a we had a, a good time just hanging out, talking about Marvel, talking about the Multiverse of Madness, et cetera, et cetera. You guys are awesome, man. You guys are all, it's always so fun when y'all show up in Nerd Avengers representing the chat, you know, and like people comment on it. Like you guys, you know, you make a big, uh, a big splash wherever you go. And it's awesome. I, I, I really like it and uh, I really appreciate it. So thank you for that. One of the things we touched on yesterday in that um, uh, podcast or stream was the 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 cuts that have happened in phase four right and so like tj brought up these comments being made about how originally there was a gore the god butcher cameo or perhaps even a post credit scene that would happen in the moon knight show and uh that's not the first time we've heard somebody from the moon knight show talk about different things that were cut like, I think one of the writers or directors said there were two major cameos in the beginning of the show, and then there were two major cameos at the end of the show, and both of them were cut. This adds to the sort of long list of projects within Phase 4 that have had major connective tissue or, you know, super nerdy fun things cut from them. Uh, I think WandaVision was probably the first example of this with Doctor Strange being cut out of it, right? Um, even... Uh, falcon the winter soldier it's never been like 100 percent confirmed but there's a lot of evidence that there were even more fun things that were possibly going to show up in that show uh that ultimately got cut from it and uh even in hawkeye even though um uh, kingpin is in the film they cut out kingpin scenes they, they cut out a post credit scene from one episode they cut out more scenes between him and his mother or uh him and uh, her mother uh kate's mother and uh all sorts of stuff like that right and I think there has been a feeling in Phase 4 thus far that it is uh, not up to par or up to quality for especially what we remember at the end of Phase 3. Those last, like, three, four, five years in Phase 3 were toit. They were toit. It was, it was like, really tight. And, and I think that a lot of Marvel fans were actually created during that time period. Like, you guys let me know. But for me, I remember... A lot of people coming into Marvel at that point. There were people like, yo, uh, this is really cool. What movies should I watch? Or, hey, this is really fun. Uh, do you want to watch some of this stuff? Or, you know, what what should I do? What do or asking me general questions about this character, that character, etc., etc., right? It was a great time. You know, it was an awesome time. And I felt like the lead up to Endgame was this, like, massive cultural moment, dude. It felt like the whole world was waiting to see what was going to happen, and we were excited to experience it together. The run-up to Infinity War and Endgame is probably, like, one of the most fun times I've ever had as a content creator. It was awesome. And coming out of that, we have the Phase 4 that we have right now, you know? And you've got Black Widow, right? Which is a movie that really feels out of time. Should have probably been earlier on, maybe Phase 1 or Phase 2. You've got uh, Shang-Chi, which is good, but also kind of feels like a movie from Phase 1 or Phase 2. And then you've got Eternals, which I personally like, but is pretty wibbly-wobbly. I don't know where that belongs in the Marvel pantheon. You know what I mean? Uh, and then you have Spider-Man No Way Home, and then you have Doctor Strange. Now, obviously, No Way Home and uh, Multiverse of Madness are much stronger entries than a lot of those other movies. But even if you look at the shows, like, yeah, we're not batting a thousand here, right? And the question came up yesterday in... Um, in the stream, in the podcast that we did, why do you think some of these things were being cut? And the answer from Marvel, and the answer that a lot of people are sort of, I guess, either buying into or seeing it as the real reason, uh, is that it's all about the quality of the stories. And we're getting sort of hurt, like we're hearing a lot like, oh, well, we did this to, to have the focus on this character or to, to focus on this story or things of that nature. And I guess I just wonder um, to you guys, and let's go to Pole Town. You know what I mean? Like, let's let's go to Pole Town USA on this. Um, do you believe that Feige is cutting things for 
story reasons. I guess I'm curious, like, do you guys uh, believe that? You let me know. You let me know. Because I don't. Yeah, I just don't believe it. You know? Maybe that's part of the reason. But, like, here's the thing, and I really want to sort of hone in on this idea before we kind of move on to some of the more exciting stuff that's being said out there, right? I find it pretty odd just from the perspective of you, you know, have you guys ever heard the ex expression, uh, you dance with who brought you? Have you ever heard that expression? You dance with who brung you. I think it's the way I heard it. Meaning, uh, the, the thing or the person that got you to where you're at, you don't abandon that when you're at the big dance. Okay. And I just find it to be so wild of an idea and of a concept that Feige would make $23 billion with the Infinity Saga and then decide, well, you know what? Instead of connective tissue and fun and injecting the Marvel formula and injecting all this stuff that brings it all together and makes it all matter, what if we just didn't do that anymore? You know what I mean? Like, what if we were, what if we just focused on the story? What if we just focused on the singular characters? Wouldn't that be swell? Yeah, I just don't buy it, dude. Like, I, I don't, I don't buy it, like, almost at all, really, you know? Like, may, like, so here's the thing. Maybe there's a scenario in which injecting these kind of things into a story is difficult. And there is a balance of how do you connect this to the wider MCU, create fun Easter egg connective tissue stuff that all Marvel fans love, and yet also still have the story be great. And yet, and have all of the characters feel serviced, Right. How do you do that? Well, yeah, that is hard. And that's called the MCU. And you didn't always nail it. You know, there were moments that, that weren't perfect. You know? And the evolution of that balance is really what made the end of the Infinity Saga crazy. Like, it's not just that all of those heroes are on the screen together. It's that the Russo brothers figured out a way to have all of those characters on the screen together and yet have them all feel satisfying, have them all feel like they belong, and really balance like an ensemble cast of very powerful personalities, right? So maybe there's a scenario in which, yes, it's harder or would be harder to inject all of these things in there. And perhaps because of other reasons, Feige removes some of that connective tissue stuff or some of those cameos to allow the writers to write more of a succinct story. Maybe. But that's not the same thing as saying that's the sole reason we're doing it. So what is the reason then? If, if I'm out there and proposing that I don't think that's actually the reason, then what is the reason? The reason, I think, is really about two things. Two things. Yeah, Marvel hates fun. Right. Yeah, exactly, Nikki. Right? Like, come on, man. Come on, man. Um, the first reason is because of the pandy. Okay? And look. They, they will they keep trying to hide it for whatever reason. They don't want to talk about it. But the pandy changed a lot. I say this sometimes and some people like don't believe me, but it's it's pretty well documented. Do you know what the LLC was for Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Because they create LLCs uh, for these different projects to to run the uh, financing of these projects through little LLCs. Do you know what it was? The LLC, yeah, Reed got it. It was called Pandemic 
Productions LLC. You see, before the real Pandy hit, they were going to involve a Pandy in Falcon the Winter Soldier. And we can assume that that plan and that plot point was likely going to touch many other projects. And so even if it wasn't difficult, and it was difficult, even if it wasn't the constrictions because of all of the policies and et cetera, et cetera, they changed that shit up regardless because they didn't want that. They felt like it was a bad look. And to be honest with you, probably was. Right? And so no matter what, even without all the other constraints and all the other problems and just the state of the world and how hard it was to make these projects, they changed a lot of the stuff simply because there was an event that was going to happen, or at least maybe almost happen, that was eerily close, way too close, life imitates art, et cetera, et cetera, to what actually happened, right? So they changed that show. I mean, I feel like that show is terrible, uh, mostly because of that. They tear that apart. They remake the show. And that last episode in particular is just horrible, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, so that's part of it, right? Of course, it was very difficult to make these projects because of all the, the testing, uh, you know, masks, you know, travel, all this stuff, insurance costs, all this crazy stuff. So it made everything more difficult. The other side of this, though, was what happened in 2019 with Sony. And Sony, I think, really threw Kevin Feige a curveball when they just decided they were going to take uh, Tom Holland back. You know, I've talked about this a lot, but bears repeating. There was this news out there or a, a report out there, this story out there that people were talking about that if no way or rather far from home made over a billion dollars, it would solidify the relationship between Feige, Marvel and Sony. And if it didn't make a billion dollars, there was a clause in the contract where all that stuff would end and the rights would completely revert back to Sony. And then I remember when it crossed a billion dollars, we all celebrated and we all cheered and we were like, dude, yeah, Spidey's safe in the MCU. And then like a month later, Sony was like, nah, fam. We're taking that shit back. We don't need Feige. We've got Morbius. You know, at the time, we didn't realize that they did have uh, the most incredible cinematic experience that uh, has ever been known to man. Something that has reshaped the histories. The, the summer of Morbius, right? We didn't realize back then Sony was right. So Sony kind of pulls out. I think that really shook up the plans for Marvel Studios. I also think Chadwick Boseman passing shook up Marvel Studios. By the way, nobody knew that Chad was sick. Like, nobody. Like, his close family probably did. But, like, nobody, bro. Nobody. Nate Moore didn't know. Um, none of the actors knew. Um, Ryan Coogler didn't know. Kevin Feige didn't know. And I'm sure that came as a massive shock to Feige and everybody over there. Because I think Chad was a big part of what they were going to do moving forward. And so I think really what has happened over the past couple of years, why Phase 4 has felt the way that it has felt, has more to do with the plan changing, partially because of the Pandy, partially because of Sony, partially because of Chadwick, and also because of the restrictions. I think this shit was way harder to complete during uh, the, the Pandy than they thought. And so I think when we look back at this phase of Marvel, this sort of beginning of phase four, we will understand that it is not indicative of their desires and of their overall plan. Like some people think after Endgame, they have no plan. They're just doing the same thing, pandering and trying to do their own shit, right? And that is so far from the truth. I think it's crazy. And of course, at CinemaCon recently, Feige talked about his plan all the way to 2032 that he is currently at or was at a editorial retreat of sorts all designed to flesh out the plan for what is coming okay and so i think that from this point forward as we get towards fantastic four as we get towards the x-men and as we of course head towards secret wars 
you're gonna see all of that stuff that you wanted like like there's gonna be cameos that that start popping up in these shows right there's gonna be uh fun connective stuff that pops up in these movies all this stuff's gonna fit way better together like i'm telling you right now i am calling that right now that all this bullshit of like well we just wanted it to be about moon knight and all that stuff you'll stop you'll cease to hear that and you will see the uh sort of remnants of the old mcu and the way they do things formula back and i'm excited for it do you know what i mean like i'm actually excited for it i think it's gonna be sick and on top of that we just got multiverse of madness which sets up incursions and that combined with loki i think gives us a real look at what the future will entail for all of these characters okay so i want to i want to get into it this is over at murphy's multiverse.com uh and they sat down with uh michael waldron and there's actually a ton like we're actually going to look at another article that they have up too about something else that waldron said but this all has to do with incursions and this all has to do with the multiverse so let's read from the article here it says jonathan hickman always had a way of reinvigorating stories with some of the most popular marvel characters while many will remember his amazing work on the crossover event secret wars he also gave us quite the iconic run focus on the fantastic four it's true uh it brought to uh, new a new life to marvel's first family and redefined their position within marvel universe for many it's true uh it seems that may have also been a big inspiration for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness uh, as uh, writer Michael Waldron. In an exclusive interview with Charles Murphy, uh, the writer talked about many influences in the film, and it turns out Hickman's run with Reed Richards also played a key part in how he approached Illuminati Mr. Fantastic. So he says here, uh, yes, and I still have to be deliberately uh, cagey for one more weekend about the specifics about these actors and everything, but it was really trying to draw on that Hickman version of that, of the Illuminati and how they dealt with the incursions. That specific character I love deeply and was excited to collaborate with that actor on and how to bring him to life. Okay, so freaking awesome you know what i mean freaking awesome but what does it mean right what does it mean so i don't know how, what more evidence you really need that the jonathan hickman secret wars is going to be what they do next and i think they're going to go there much faster than people understand or, or want to acknowledge right and I did a video on it. It's the first in a big series that we're doing that's like the road to MCU Secret Wars. And I'm going to break down all these different aspects of the Hickman uh, run, his event, and why it's so epic. But, like, here's the thing. The first three phases of Marvel are essentially taking one of the greatest comic book stories ever told. And that would be uh, the Infinity Gauntlet and Thanos Quest and combines it with a lot of other fun things that were going on but sort of does this retelling or reimagining of that right like if you're a hardcore uh marvel fan thanos and uh infinity gauntlet and thanos quest and that sort of stuff like of course you've read it it it, it echoes an eternity as uh the gladiator dude would say it's a huge part of not just what happens then but what happens forever the stones and Thanos become a staple of Marvel and are used in a myriad of very cool ways for like the next 40, 50 years, right? One of those stories that Feige injects and, and sort of brings in to his uh, Thanos quest story is Jonathan Hickman's Infinity event, okay? Infinity. In the Infinity run, you have... Uh, the i believe they were called the call obsidian in uh in comics what's now known as the black order and you had um you know all, all those characters like the squidward looking dude um proxima midnight corvus clave um black dwarf i forget his name in the mcu um all those characters were created you also have wakanda being a stronghold against an invasion of thanos's forces in the infinity event 
And so Feige takes one of the best modern day comic book writers. Like I think Hickman is absolutely incredible. He's he's probably he's in my top three of favorite writers ever, and definitely my favorite writer that's still like in his prime killing the game right now. And it's he's so underrated, dude. And it sounds funny to say that Hickman is underrated, but I think he is. I think he is leagues ahead of almost anybody out there that's writing books right now. Like leagues. Like we basically won't be able to appreciate the brilliance of uh, Hickman until I think like years and years and years from now when we look back and we're just like, damn dog, like that shit was crazy. That's my opinion, of course. But uh, yeah, that's that's absolutely how I feel about it. And Feige, being maybe the best producer ever, is able to, as a big sweaty nerd, get enamored with Hickman's stuff. And so he injects Hickman's stuff in one of the greatest comic book stories ever told, Infinity Gauntlet, in the MCU. Which, by the way, was absolutely a part of the reason why I felt that Secret Wars was coming. I essentially, even back then, thought, oh, he's doing uh, Hickman Secret Wars. Because if you're if you're smart enough to know that Hickman elevates, and you're smart enough to recognize some of the brilliant things that he did and adapt that into the MCU, then you're probably also brilliant enough to realize that his New Avengers Avengers and his Secret Wars is the greatest story of modern comic books. It's brilliant. Like, F fucking brilliant bro you know what i mean and so that is super obviously where they are going now and the incursions being mentioned the many different times that they are in multiverse of madness and the fact that reed is the person that brings this up and explains it to steven and the fact that this version of reed by michael waldron's own admission is drawing on the Hickman version of that and how the Illuminati dealt with the incursions is like music to my fucking ears, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like, whew. Absolutely insane. And let me, uh, let me see. Let me find the other, because there's another one here that's brilliant as well. Here we go. Let's read from this. Um, exclusive Doctor Strange 2's Michael Waldron teases the growing multiversal threat of the MCU's Phase 4, okay? I'm just going to go right down to what he says here. Um, okay, and there's the threat. And it's out there, and now it's out there. There's a multiversal threat. In the same way that when the MCU first went cosmic many years ago, there was the teed up threat of Thanos, now it's probably a matter of of your setting up some multiversal threats on the board. Whether it's Kang, incursions, whatever, it'll be interesting to see how all of those things come together. It will be interesting to see, Michael. I'm pretty interested. Color me curious. I'd like to know. And I can't wait to see how it all plays out, man. And I think that this will become even more obvious after we get even more distance after um, Multiverse of Madness. And I want to tell you a couple of different things that I think are going to happen. I think... I propose... I pontificate... That at San Diego Comic-Con, at the end of this year... Which, which, by the way, when is San Diego Comic-Con? Isn't it the end of summer? When is San Diego Comic-Con this year? Somebody help me out. SDCC 2022. July 21st. Oh, man. We don't even have to wait that long, baby. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> I propose that... At San Diego Comic-Con this year, Feige will announce the Fantastic Four and who they are, who the cast is, what the name of the movie is, right? Which I think might have something to do with the multiverse. And they'll announce the X-Men, 
what's going on in, with the MCU X-Men. I mean, 97's already been announced. That's going to be straight fire. But I think you'll get even more of an announcement of uh, the Mutants Project that we know about that they're not talking about, right? And so you'll get the X-Men and you'll get the Fantastic Four. And I wouldn't be surprised. And if this happens, you will all have to refer to me as Nerd Strodamus. I will not accept anything less than being called Nerd Strodamus. Are you ready? Are you ready? The Russo brothers come out on stage and tease a series of Secret Wars movies. I don't know what happened with my hand there. But listen, that's what I think is going to happen. Because, yes, I mean, people like me are like, yeah, bro, it's coming. Many of you might have doubt. You know, some of you are like, nah, fam, like it ain't going down like that or whatnot. This, that, second, and the third. Everybody shut your mouth. Here's the deal. We know that the Russo brothers were already negotiating to do the Secret Wars movie. How do we know this? I said, shut your mouth! We know it because during the lawsuit with... Uh, Natasha Roma, why am I blanking on her real name? Scarlett Johansson. Uh, that because during that lawsuit, the Russo brothers, or rather a different outlet, reported, I think the Russos probably leaked it, that they were going to come back. But now it's in question. Now all of a sudden it's in question. Okay? And they're trying to throw their power around and, and help her get the bag and everything like that. It's totally fair. Whatever. They're homies. It's all good. The most important part for us. Remember, I did a stream freaking out on a Saturday. Put a one into the chat. Listen up. Listen up. I need some help. Put a one into the chat right now. If you were there for my Saturday freak out stream. When I thought, bruh, if Scarlet or Disney fucks up the Secret Wars movie with the Russo brothers, I will lose it. Put a one in the chat if you were there. If you were there for that stream. I wasn't even that proud of it. I went a little too far. Yeah. Yeah. Now it makes a little more sense, doesn't it? Now it maybe feels a little bit less crazy that we did that Saturday stream where your boy was freaking the fuck out. Yeah. I appreciate the 69s, by the way. Well done. So, we know they were already negotiating. And I know some people think, okay, but you got the X-Men, you got the Fantastic Four. What are they going to do? Secret Wars and then do the Fantastic Four and the X-Men? Oh, absolutely not. In fact, if you look back at what the Russos said right after Endgame, what they said was, well, you know, with Fox getting all those characters, or rather with uh, Disney getting all those Fox characters, it'd be super fun to explore something like Secret Wars. Should we watch the, should we watch the answer? Y'all want to watch that? You want to watch what the Russos said back then? Mike Haas says, no. Well, Mike, you're a grumpy motherfucker, so you'll have to deal. I think, Mike, you just, you're just going to have to deal, you grumpy motherfucker. This isn't the one, actually, though. Hang on. I got to try to find the actual interview. I see a bunch of my videos popping up about it. Three years ago. Dead of Nerds. Avengers 4 News, Russo Brothers confirm Secret Wars. <laughs> Clickbait. All right, let's, uh, I think maybe I do have the interview in there, though. Let's see. Where is, do I show the interview? That's the thing. Do I actually show? Oh, uh, man. I don't think I showed the interview. It was with Frosty. I believe. If somebody has the link, help me out too.
Hmm. Why is this so hard to find? It's almost like not a lot of people realized it from back then. Is this the one? Awkward. Awkward part of the stream. Sorry, everybody. Yo, somebody help me out in chat. Oh, shit. Is this the one? This might be the one. I mean, finally. Finally sharing the movie with mm. people. It's been three years. It's like working for the CIA. You got to keep secrets every day. You yeah, you do. What you're saying to people. Because Den of Nerds will find out. That fucking guy. It's physically. I mean, it's sort of, I'm sorry, it's mentally draining. You mm -hmm. know, it's, uh, so we're excited for people to see the film. How does that work with your actors? Because they're also the last ones to really know, right? Yeah. Is it true that you do like several different endings to confuse everyone? <laughs> <laughs> only, only Mark Ruffalo gets several different endings. Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. No, we look at we, it. Is it is hard to censor yourself? It's hard to edit yourself yeah. about what you say because look, we spend our lives e every day for the past several years. This is what we do. Mm. It's hard not to talk about what you do. It's hard mm. for the actors to not talk about what they do. But we try to make it easier for them because by limiting what they know, you know, because these movies are large and suck <laughs> this. <laughs> it's been such a blur. I don't think yeah. we can remember it. Your, your, your director's <laughs> cuts, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, these are our director's cuts. I mean, everything that uh, we. I don't think this is, is it. Exactly what we mm -hmm. wanted to release. So we've been, I mean, inc incredibly. I'm well gonna check Discord. See when you guys got it. A great deal of freedom by Marvel and Disney and. You know, I mean, they. Oh, you know, good Disney job, guys! Still, uh, you know, half the characters and uh, at the end. Nobody of, has the link. One of the most expensive movies they'd ever made. So we're we're, we're very comfortable with you know uh, the process over the last seven years. But as far as a book, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna re remember enough in detail. I, I so I hope I hope somebody writes a book, but I yeah. don't know that it will be us. <laughs> And finally, she's, she's driving me out, but the, the final question is, are you audience members of your own films? You're so attached to the this final question. Ever sucks. Just go to the cinema and. See where is it at? Damn, why is it so hard to find this? Is this the one? Son of a biscuit, dude. I can't find it. I know he talks about it here, but this is just him talking about it. The one where they both talk about it is awesome. And why can I not find it? Why can I not find it? Hmm. Well, Big L. Big L for me, I guess. Maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe I'm making all of this up. No, it wasn't a red carpet thing. It was a it was a specific interview. Secret Wars. Let me see here. Russo Brothers. A secret horrors would be fun. There's this one, yeah, but that's just him. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I think it was with Frosty actually, but I'm I'm not sure. This is like kind of bugging me now. That's a year ago, though. This is the stream now. This is this is what we're doing. Hmm. Was it this GQ interview? Come on, chat. You guys are pissing me off. Nobody's found it yet? Well, thanks a lot, chat. Hmm? 
What? Somebody got it? Somebody found it? Oh, is that it? This is the two hour one. I'm going to be pissed. This is an article, bro. I want to watch their faces as they, as they deliver it. I don't want a fucking article, bro. Is that the one? Scroll up. Huh? The video is usually in it. Uh, no, it's... All right. Check my Twitter feeds. See if any of you guys got it here. I don't see anything on my Twitter feed. Your guys is crazy. Your guys is crazy. I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. Yeah, thanks for nothing, chat. Freaking, freaking article. God. Uh. Bro. What? I'm just telling you, I don't see it. I'll check my video. Search for The Road to Secret Wars? No. I tagged you one of the vids on Discord? Oh, so you didn't message me, you tagged me. Okay. Where? In general? Well, those are my videos. God damn it. Does this have the interview in it? About a minute in it. Okay. Okay. No, I read what they're saying. I don't... Nah, bro. This ain't it. This ain't good enough. Nope. Not good enough. Anyways. Anyways, to get us back on... Uh, to get us back on track here. <laughs> yeah. That was a whole that was a whole fun thing. Look, I'll try to find it um like later or whatever, but it's a really interesting moment where they talk about it and like uh Anthony kind of does this like real real like funny like smile and it just kind of looks like they totally know what's going on here, right? I will also tell you in a story that we went over last year that uh, the Russo brothers also admitted that they take monthly meetings with Marvel even still to this day, right? And so the way I see all of this going on, man, is that they've been planning this for some time. And of course, there are a lot of moving pieces to get there, a lot of moving pieces to pull together for it. And I was thinking about like the 10 year plan, right? And I was like, how will this work? And this is just a theory. And we're really, really far out for this, right? So this could, not, this could not be the case. But I almost feel, man, that what Feige's going to do with Secret Wars and with the MCU Secret Wars is going to actually last for several years. And I think that, like, let's say 2027, 2028, that's when the beginning of Secret Wars happens where like all the incursions like I literally think in the next couple of years with all the different projects probably through Quantum Mania, Loki season 2 and uh, the Fantastic 4 movie you will begin to see how all the incursions are happening and things are sort of falling upon themselves and collapsing right and from there we'll probably arrive at Battle World and I think what Feige is going to do is spend several years on Battleworld. And I think the formula you're seeing right now with Disney Plus, with the uh, solo ancillary show or uh, movies rather, and with your big event films, that that will all take place on Battleworld. Because I was like thinking about it. I was like, well, he could do, um, you know, Secret Wars and then do... Uh, you know, Avengers vs. X-Men and then do this and then do that and then do that. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, dude, Secret Wars is the perfect end place for them. 
and it seems like at that 10 year mark with the way that it uh that it ended in the comic books the secret wars right let me see somebody said they tagged me on twitter Ooh, at 11 oh here we go now this is what i'm talking about hey mikey this is what i'm talking about baby okay and you say at 11 54 okay Okay, are you guys ready? Like I said, I found it real quick. Completely on my own. No no help. You know, no help from everybody, anybody but Mikey. Here we go. Kill the music. Turn it up. Boom. <laughs> what was this, three, four years ago? And we've talked and you've talked to others about... Um, your love of Wolverine, Fantastic Four, Secret Wars, of those three, which is the one that's going to pull you back in a couple of years? I think I keep saying Secret Wars because that was one of the first books that I really fell in love with. <laughs> you see that smile? Wars, this yeah. notion of like, a, you know, event storytelling. And I think that's part of the reason that we gravitate so strongly towards these event films and these ensemble films is that the, the notion that like you, c you can contain so many different characters and so many different points of view. Yeah and galvanize them around a story point is really compelling to us. Would you ever consider a DC Universe film? If, one um, if he gets to read the script, hopefully you'll actually <laughs> let him see it. He's read the script. <laughs> <laughs> the script he has read. Yeah. And uh, we've talked and you've talked to others about um, your love of Wolverine, Fantastic Four, Secret Wars, of those three, which is the one that's gonna pull you back in a couple of years? I think I keep saying Secret Wars because that was one of the first books that I really fell in love with as a kid. Was He's like, you motherfucker, notion. you're just telling him. Uh, you know, event storytelling. Uh, shit. And I think okay, anyway. Reason that Thank you for that. Uh, should have only taken a minute, but I apologize, guys. You know, things don't run perfectly. Anyway, as I was saying, here's the thing. The more I think about uh, Feige, MCU, Marvel, and everything, the way that uh, Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars ends is it actually ends as something like a soft reboot. Because Reed, Franklin, and Owen Reese, the Molecule Man, are all recreating the multiverse. Because it's all been destroyed. <clears throat> and so they're recreating it. <clears throat> and sort of throwing all of the universes back out into the cosmos. And I think it would just be such an epic end point for the MCU under Feige because I do believe he'll probably actually step away at that point and they could do a soft reboot of the MCU at that point bring you know keep some of the characters that were still playing those roles if the actors wanted to and reboot everything you know what I mean and so like I think some of this will become more clear as we uh head towards San Diego Comic-Con this year and as we head uh you know, towards the future MCU projects. And I think that you're going to get not only, <clears throat> not only will you get your fun Marvel flavor back with all the connective tissue and all that fun stuff, but I think you'll have it elevated. And I think you will see the development of the X-Men, of the Fantastic Four, uh, of a ton of different Marvel characters. And then we will go to Battle World, bro. And we will explore all of these different characters on Battle World. And I think that will last years. And I think the Disney Plus shows that you'll see during that will be like those Battle World one shots and those offshoots that we got during uh, Hickman's Secret Wars. It was crazy, dude. Like, it was so fun. I loved a lot of the stories from that era uh, that weren't even the main book. Like, there's stuff that's not even in the main book that is fantastic. So I think that's I think that's what we're gonna get, guys. And I think it would be, I think it's gonna be bananas. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, dude. That's the that's the thought. That's the theory. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. Now let's shift. Let's get into Q and A. Go over some of these soupies, uh, and I'll hang out on the chat chat as well because I certainly want to know what y'all think uh, about some of the stuff that we went over today. Okay. So, and by the way, get those likes up, man. Over 900 people in here, and you can't get the likes up to at least 500. Come on, man. Come on, man. Okay, let's let's get into the super chats, man. 
Carlton was first in today with a five dollar holla. Says, do you think eight three eight and six one six will be the last two universes referenced in time? runs out it's possible you know i highly recommend everybody check out the video i did yesterday uh all about how the illuminati could still be alive there's several different ways that that illuminati could still be alive like literally the one she killed could still be alive um and i think it would be awesome if they did that and if those two universes were at odds at the end of time i think it would be sick so uh yeah it's totally possible uh, Tom Riddle says, what up, my guy? Time to spark the blizzy. You don't spark blizzies. Oh, wait, yeah, you do. I'm just thinking blinkers. But, uh, yeah, good for you, Tom. Is there a thing known as the elder blizzy? Like a weird, old, crooked blunt that never goes, like, never, you, you smoke it forever or something like that? I feel like that might have been in Harry Potter. Big Steven W. With a 20-month member chat that YouTube is telling him is 13 months. Uh, he says 13 months, more like 19 or 20, YouTube. Also, I have no idea about the Kenobi leaks, and I'm doing just fine and excited for the show. This is why I try to stay away. Yeah, I get you, bro. And I think, um, <laughs> oh, man, what to say about that? Um, I'm very curious how you'll feel about it, Stevie, after you see it. You know, we'll revisit later. Chris Kimball with an eight-month member chat says, Josh, don't feel bad, man. I absolutely love you and your content. I'm always going to be here. You'll never lose me. Nerd Vengeance for life, fam. Hey, thanks, man. And look, I'm still going to cover Star Wars. I love Star Wars. It's just that, like, I don't think I can give Star Wars the same love that I'm giving Marvel right now. I think that's obvious. I think it's been obvious. And I, and I don't want to force it. Um, and so, look, if Star Wars continues to sort of erode, and that's really what I think is happening, is it's eroding. Um, then I just, ugh, I don't know. I'm not going to be able to be a nice person about it, and so therefore I think I should probably not talk about it as much. MCU Drew says, I watched the Twitch stream after some work meetings. I like you and Paul together. Oh, yeah, I love I love that dude. Uh, love uh, sharing the mic with him and, uh, you know, conversing. And I, and I felt like everybody had good takes yesterday. It was a really good conversation. It was fun, man. And again, I'm really glad you guys showed up. It was dope. Just felt like riding. Comes in and says, just popping in to say much love, Papa Josh and fam. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. It's very, very kind of you. Uh, Rhett Prokta with a $10 holla says, if Bryce Dallas and Krasinski co-write the Fantastic Four, I hope they use Super Scroll or Annihilus for the first movie, Villain, and save Doctor Doom for the third movie. I mean, look, man, I'm a Doom fanboy. I think you need Doom immediately. I I mean, by the way, Doom is coming very fast very fast i think you'll see you'll either see dr doom himself or have references to doom by the end of this year i would say uh in the mcu and again that's because they need to move fast in order to have all those characters established for secret wars which i think comes in four five years so um yeah no i i i think that super skull and annihilus are sick that'd be super fun as well why not both why not have Victor and the Fantastic Four work together? Why not do some of the Future Foundation stuff? Why not do some of the stuff where Reed's kids are living in Latveria with Uncle Doom? Oh, y'all didn't know about that? Oh, y'all didn't know about that? Yeah, it's fucking awesome. And they should do something like that in the movie. I think it would be great. Drum and Company says, If he cared about singular characters, he'd have better arcs for them. Uh, what's been happening lately feels like a lot of improv. Good improv, but improv. I don't know who you're referring to. Maybe you're referring to Feige. Um, yeah, I disagree. Uh, I think the arcs and the characters have been good. They're not perfect. And I will also say that I think there's something happening right now where Feige has certainly, uh, at least in my opinion, kind of stepped back and given a lot more control in certain projects to other people. But I think that's really because he's heavily focused on secret wars and on that and so i think that like it's one of those things where basically like yo it's fine if things aren't perfect right now because what really matters is nailing it i mean the infinity saga is definitely not perfect and there's a lot of whack movies in there and a lot of weird periods but it ends so strong that we look back at it and we're like from iron man to end game it was amazing you know what i mean so uh it's it's really about how you finish that story out in my opinion Tobin says, started a new job, but glad to be back in these streams. I say give Raimi Midnight Suns, because after MOM, I want to see Strange and Wanda pack that team. Yeah, that would be sick, dude. I agree. And also, uh, congrats on the new job. Good to see you in the tower. Midnight Suns would be sick, dude. 
I, I personally, and I know not everybody feels this way because some people really didn't like uh, Multiverse of Madness. I say give Raimi everything. I love his sensibility, bro. I love his sensibility. I thought it was great. But uh, yeah, it would really play well for the horror stuff for sure. Uh, the Exodus says, picture it. Doom marries Amnias, uh, yeah, can't remember shit, Wanda, learns from her how to steal powers, then hops the multiverse, stealing the power of all of her variants. Yeah, you know what? I actually want to take a second here and explain something. Because I actually made an error in a lot of the sort of sh shorthand comments that I made about Doom and Molecule Man, okay? I've been, like, going back and rereading a ton of this stuff, and I didn't remember that Doom actually gets a bunch of Molecule Man and kind of creates a bomb, like a super bomb, with all of the Molecule Man. So, in I guess it, maybe in one of the ways I remembered it, he was killing them and absorbing their power into that singular Owen, but that's not what happened. He actually went and got a bunch of them from throughout the multiverse and had them all together as like a big bomb. And then he sends that bomb at the Beyonders. The, that bomb with all the other uh, Molecule Men destroys the Beyonders. And then that last Owen is, is able to absorb the power of the Beyonders. So it's a little bit slightly different than I remember it, but uh, I'm going to cover all of that in the part two to the Secret Wars series because I want to talk about Molecule Man, I want to talk about Wanda, I want to talk about Doctor Doom. So, But I still love uh, the idea, and you know, I think uh, i got to double-check to make sure this is real, but I believe Daniel is teasing out that there absolutely will be a Scarlet Witch solo project, whether that's a movie or a show, we don't know. But, yeah, I feel like that's going to be awesome and probably... If this theory about Wanda replacing Molecule Man is real, that will probably be explored there as well. Trev says the gas leak phase where my community fan where my community fans at that was also season four. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Community was sick too. Uh, Austin Johnson, member for ten months, says, "Yo, Josh, totally agree about Hickman." I currently only need a couple more books to complete the story from Secret Wars or Secret Warriors rather all the way to Secret Wars. Yes. And look, in some ways, and I wouldn't say necessarily in Secret Warriors, but definitely in his Fantastic Four run, the story he wrote kind of feels like one big story from Fantastic Four all the way to Secret Wars. It's crazy. It's so epic, man. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Glad you like it. It's, it's a good time to be a comic book fan and a cinema movie fan. Disney Plus streaming show pamphlet fan. Sozin says, does Kang benefit from the destruction of the Darkhold in every universe? I think he let MOM unfold because he can't see the future. Okay. First of all, I don't think he let MOM happen because at that point he doesn't have control. Not in the same way that He Who Remains had control. There's some control there still, but not the same. My theory on this right now is that I think He Who Remains created the sacred timeline in a way that the heroes within the sacred timeline would be the best versions of the heroes because i think he knew he would someday have to fight a multiversal war if he ever lost control and he would want the best version of the avengers to help him win that war and i think that is where sort of this element of avengers forever comes in and like Council of Kangs and stuff like that. So I think just like in all the other MCU events, you're going to see a blending. It's not going to purely be Hickman's stuff. It's going to blend. But I think that Kang is obviously going to play a huge role in that. And I can't wait, dude, because Kang's sick. The real Jesse Lee Reed says, let's do nerd math. Doctor Strange plays takes in 2024. The twins aged up in the hex in 616. But if they're not real in most of the universes, then no reason for hex. It's true. It's true. Again, I think that might have to do with Kang. I think it might have something to do with Kang. I'm not 100% certain on that, but I do think that's the case. And perhaps the twins and other universes are uh, Wonder Man's kids. Because I don't think there'd be a vision. If they make Ultron the right way from the jump, then there is no vision. They create vision as an antidote to Ultron going nuts. And so, you know, we don't know for sure, but it seems like in 838, Ultron's fine. And the Ultron program is fine. So there's literally no reason for Vision. So Wanda would never have met Vision. So it's probably just Wonder Man or something like that, right? 
The real Jesse Lee Reed says, so the 838 twins must be born in 20 or 2014. Vision didn't exist yet in 2014, so he can't possibly be the 838 twins father. So who is? Yeah, I just told you. I think it's uh, it's going to be uh, Wonder Man. Uh, MCU Drew says, bet your hair on the Secret Wars announcement. Do it. No, 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 no. I'm not that confident. Not that confident. Uh, Machine Gun Kata says, the fact that it's called uh, Pandemic Productions shows they are in cahoots. They knew about it before it happened. Oh, yeah, 100%, bro. I agree. It was Marvel Studios the whole time. Uh, WRX Monkey Boy with a $5 holla says, Have you played uh, Disney Villainous? It's a tabletop game. I keep seeing it when I go into the comic book shop. I haven't played it, actually. Uh, there's also Marvel Villainous and Star Wars version coming in August. That's dope. Um, we just picked up a game. I think it's called Untapped. And I think it's meant to be something like a escape room that you can do on a tabletop uh and we just picked up a star wars one so we're excited to get into that but no nah, i've never picked up villainous is it dope is it dope sir sozins follows up with a 10 dollar holla says i thought that the x-men 97 show would be a prequel to mom because charles is still alive but after watching your video now i'm not so sure it could take place after if they got brought back take my money Yes, it's it's too early to tell. I think that will probably be explained at San Diego Comic-Con as well. But I will tell you this. I think that the X-Men 97 show is going to be very impactful and very important for not just what the mutants are in the 616, but in the multiverse. <gasps> That's pretty cool. Uh, Justin Moore with a member chat for eight months. Thanks for all that support. Says, since there's been no mention of mutants yet, I have a feeling they're going to change Namor's mutant background. Thoughts? P.S. Thanks for the great content. I sure hope not. I sure hope not, man. Uh, mm, he's, got the fur, he's got the wings. He's got the wings on his feet. They go up his leg. It looks really cool. Like feathers, like ceremonial, like uh, native feathering. So they look like the winged uh, feet to me. So I think that he's probably still a mutant. Uh, or maybe they just won't explain it. I, I really hope not. I think at this point, like, just do the mutant thing, talk about it, say it. They're dancing around it, uh, and I want I want it. I want it. I want it, so... The real Jesse Lee Reed says, furthermore, there is circumstantial evidence that Viz never existed in 838 or any other universe. Also, in 838, Wanda probably didn't get what are you trying to say here? Uh, involved with Hydra because by the time AOU, she was already raising two infant boys. Maybe Simon Williams. Yeah, exactly. Is 838's dad? dad. Yeah, dude, 100%. That's what I'm saying. Am I over mathing? Or is it something? No, I think you're, bro, I think you're onto it. I think that, I think that's exactly the way I feel about it. Onar Jet, member for 17 months, says, Fi can do whatever he wants now that the multiverse is blown open. Totally here for all the craziness. Let's go, Nerd Avengers. Indeed. And I am here for it. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Okay, the talented Mr. Griffin, appreciate you, bro, says, uh, Hey, Josh, do you think A38 Strange could have dreamwalked into Supreme Strange and been the catalyst for the events that destroyed that universe? It is possible, man. <coughs> I think that's a thread that will be picked up on. Yep. I think that's a thread that will be picked up on, and I would love that. I will say this. They're obviously terrified of dreamwalking. That's why they kill their own Steven. Because they're so afraid that if another Steven dream walks into their Steven, that it could cause an incursion. They're so afraid of it, they kill Steven. It's crazy. Uh, Parker Thwips says, yo, Scarlet Witch didn't kill Black Bolt. He killed himself by yelling. Uh, the power bounced back with no escape and popped his brain. Watch it again. You can see the energy build with nowhere else to go. I did. I kind of agree, but I'm not so sure. Either way, she killed him, bro. You know what I mean? Like, you could say, like, it was his own voice or whatever. But, uh, nah, she probably, she killed him, bro. I also think it's a little bit weird that with all that power, it wouldn't just rip out his own mouth and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, why would it go back and exit into his brain? I don't know. That's just me, though. Camus says, Josh, what happened in Secret Wars comic? Who wins? What's the end of that comic book story? Okay, the end is pretty awesome. So... Essentially, Doctor Doom, God Doctor Doom, 
He's got the power of the Beyonders. But what he really has is that Owen Reese, who's something like a cosmic battery for all the power of the Beyonders. And that power flows into Victor, and Victor is able to use it to keep the world together, build the world, and do crazy things. Reed Richards ends up fighting Doctor Doom in the same place where he's housing Molecule Man. So he's got this like secret chamber where he's got Molecule Man, right? And uh, Doom is fighting Reed, and they're arguing and freaking out on each other. And uh, basically, essentially, at one point, uh, Reed says, you tried your best, but you're bitter, and you know that I would have done a better job, that it should have been me that had all of this power. And you should have asked for my help, just like you did way back when I saw the flaw in your machine and it blew up when you went into hell. And Victor admits it. And Doom basically admits, yes, you, sh you should have been the one. And Molecule Man is right there, and he basically just goes, fine. And he shifts all the power from Doom to Reed. And so now Reed just becomes God of that world. And then they fix the, they go about fixing the multiverse together. It's really, really wild. It really feels like a sort of full circle moment for the characters of Reed and for the characters of Victor. It's like a really, it's it has oomph. It's got a lot of heart. It feels uh, like, you know, telling that same old tale, but with a really interesting take. And so it's, uh, it's pretty wild. Renee says, considering Spider-Man's role in Star Wars, what? or Secret Wars. Do you think White Shug will make a power play to get either Parker or Morales in the MCU permanently at any time? I think that he would love to, Renee, but I'm sort of leaning towards this idea that he doesn't want to stake anything on that. Like, basically, like, I think the last couple of years have probably showed him that when it comes to Spider-Man, less is more, and you don't want to commit to anything because Sony could just screw up your plans. So... I think you'll still get Spider-Man there, 100%. I think he technically already still has a contracted MCU movie. Uh, and so, yeah, I think Spider-Man will be there. It's yet to be determined if a lot of the other Sony characters are there. And with the way that, like, Morbius is, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Uh, Sub-Zero Visuals with a 10 spot. Very generous. He just did three 10 spots back to back to back. Holy shit. Says, hey, Josh, love the streams content, my brother. I had a video idea in prep for Secret Wars. Let's say they go to Battle World route. What do you think about a video where we put all current and old and future MCU superhero slash villains in a tournament bracket? This could be a four to five part series. We go through the matchups, get an overall winner. Member slash chats could uh, use that bracket as a tent pole and vote for who they think would win when Secret Wars does come out. We could use that same template and change the characters for who's available at the time. I have uh, have members submit their brackets. Yeah, so we've actually done something like that before, actually. We did a battle bracket during the pandemic. We did a battle bracket for, um, like we just put a bunch of awesome Star Wars characters and Marvel characters on there. Uh, everybody got triggered because like Goku and Luke Skywalker beat everybody and stuff, but uh, yeah, something like that could be super fun, and uh, I like the idea of Sub-Zero Visuals. Maybe we will get that going on. Hit me up uh, hit me up uh, on Discord or something. Maybe we can get that going on. Big Stevie says, if Kenobi does crash and burn, then you'll have to cover Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Oh, my God. No, thanks. Uh, and Sub-Zero Visuals follows up and says, first movie, if it's a second part slash trilogy, whatever gets closest to the actual winner gets a grand prize of whatever you choose. Could be a fun way to build up hype. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree, bro. And hit me up about that. Maybe we can work together on that. Vito says, even though I'm not really around, I need to know. As of May 11th, 2022, is any Marvel movie or show better than the Snyder Cut? I say no. Uh, Omega Beams. Hmm... I'd probably have to say Multiverse of Madness. I would put Multiverse of Madness just as a film film. I think it's that strong. I like it that much. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably have to say that. I mean, dude, the Snyder Cut's brilliant. I have I revisit it probably at least once, uh, like every six, seven months, because I love it. And my heart breaks for all of that potential uh, essentially wasted. But I'll tell you this, Veed. Um, get ready for... Uh, 
Rebel Moon, my guy. Rebel Moon. When Snyder makes the best Star Wars movie and the best Star Wars series ever, then I think finally people will understand. Then I think people will finally put respect on his name. Lewis says, uh, hope we see Tom Cruise's superior Iron Man in Doctor Strange 3 or Secret Wars. I would obviously love this, man. I'm pretty keen on the idea. I would love it. Um, I, I just don't know if it'll happen. I got to be honest. It kind of seems like Tom's pretty stringent. Feige's very stringent. I don't know if that's a good match. We'll see, though. Uh, Sneakza with a $10 holla. Very generous. Says, Josh, never been into comics, so I'm new and learning through watching the MCU and your videos. What's the difference between Secret Invasion and Secret Wars? Okay. Secret Invasion was when the Scrolls, who are the shape-shifting aliens, invaded Earth in an attempt to take it over. They infiltrated different teams, different governments, and they were it was bad, bro. I think uh, Nick Fury sort of sees it coming and goes completely into hiding like years before this happens. So like during the events of Civil War, Maria Hill is in charge of uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., because Nick Fury vanished. And he vanished because he saw the secret invasion happening. So secret invasion, all about the scrolls. At the end of it, Norman Osborn kills the scroll queen. He's elevated to the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. He creates the Dark Avengers and Hammer. Awesome. Secret Wars had many different versions in the comics, but they all sort of revolve around taking all the heroes and all the villains together, slapping them on Battle World and having them fight. You know? So that's kind of that's kind of the difference, my guy. Fifi says, "Do you think the MCU Secret Wars will have Kang replace the Beyonder?" I actually don't think so because I think there's something that Kang is afraid of, and it's the Beyonders. I think the Beyonders is still like a really useful narrative device to sort of just explain how crazy all of this is. And uh, in the video, I'm going to do part two to the Secret Wars series. I'm going to go into. Like some of the things I've seen in all the Marvel projects, like even in the, even in the place that Cthulhu created the shrine for uh, Scarlet Witch, there's some of the same symbols that you see in the Eternals. And I think it all comes together. I think it all means something, you know, uh, and that all sort of leads to the Beyonders. Cyber Coastal, 23 month member. Holy shit. Uh, thanks for that. Says, uh, my biggest problem with MOM was the actors not all being in the same room, even while shooting scenes, mainly the Illuminati. I like the movie, but I can see why it's divisive overall. I think that's a fair take. I will say that that is actually the weakest part of the movie is the, uh, Illuminati sequence. Cause yeah, there's just a ton of cutting and it's just kind of weird how it's all placed together, but I still think it's, it's more or less salvaged. It does its job. It got me super excited, obviously as a big sweaty nerd. And uh, I think it's really fun, but uh, yeah, I can see I can see why that part of it is, uh, you know, I, I agree. I think it's kind of the weakest part of the movie. Lewis says, "Hope we get Jackman Wolverine in Secret Wars." I think that's literally the plan. I think they have literally had that conversation. Isn't that wild? Like, dude, that's crazy, crazy world we live in. Amelia says with a ten dollar holla says, "I'm confused by recent complaints online about Cameo Fest in the MCU." They, there haven't been that many, and the team-ups in Phase 3 were super fun. Am I missing something here? Take my money. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, I, uh, you know, it's one of these things where I, I don't know. Like, maybe people are just feel that Marvel's differently right now, and they can't necessarily even explain why. And they're, like, looking at what other people are saying and kind of, like, saying, oh, maybe that's why that is or whatever, you know? Uh, I agree. I think it's stupid. Like, dude, the cameos are great. And uh, that kind of stuff is super fun. But Marvel's real strength is just kind of being able to make awesome movies. So the truth is, like, making a dope movie is at the core of it. But, I mean, come on, man. Iron Man 1, post credit scenes. And you could see in that archival footage that there was a post credit scene where Nick Fury mentioned Spider-Man and the mutants. Like, that's Marvel. It's Marvel Comics. You're watching fucking comic book movies, bro. Like, that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, yeah, Amelia, I agree. It's weird, huh? It's kind of whack. Parker Lux says, John Cambia believes Strange isn't going to be as important of a character for Secret Wars. Do you agree? Any chance for Spider-Man and Fantastic Four? I think there is a chance. And, uh, no, I disagree with this take. I think, uh, <laughs> I mean, I think Steven is obviously going to be a huge deal for Secret Wars. I think that's what the post credit scene of Multiverse of Menace is all about. So, uh, no, I, uh, I disagree with Sir Campia there. 
Genesis says, Morning, Josh. What do you believe is the next big storyline after Secret Wars? I actually I went over this earlier, but I think they reboot. It's either Avengers vs. X-Men with the Phoenix Force being heavily involved, or they reboot. You know what I mean? Uh, Fifi asks, which Secret Wars do you think they'll adapt? Uh, my answer is it'll be a combo, but heavily pulled from Hickman's stuff. Heavily. J. Mike says, you think Gwen Stacy from Toby's Universe will be considered a variant of Sue Storm if Bryce gets the role? Uh, also, Josh, where so we send y'all's baby gifts? Uh, well, so we have a registry, which I think you can find on the Discord. She'll be able to link you there. Uh, and also we have a P.O. box. So I don't know the P.O. box address offhand, but you could send it to the P.O. box. You could send it. Uh, you could do the registry thing. Either one would be great. Uh, and thanks, man. I appreciate that. And also, yeah, how wild was it that I literally have tried to remove Spider-Man 3 so much from my memories that I forgot Bryce was Gwen Stacy in that movie. That was a mind-blowing moment. Meatbag Slayer. 47 hk 47 nice man says uh chris evans human torch crosses path with chris evans captain america wouldn't that be wild wouldn't that be absolutely wild Rhett procta says i sure wish the original x-men movies used james Marsden's cyclops more wouldn't it be something if they brought him back to the mcu i had to pick up the new actor i'd probably go with jensen eccles dude jensen would be good uh, and yeah, I actually really liked him as Scott. I thought it was great. Uh, but yeah, they, they did him a little bit dirty in the movie. So yeah, I, I hope that whatever they do with the mutants and X-Men moving forward, like that um, Cyclops gets his fair shake. You know what I mean? Big Kale, member for 11 months, says, have a sneaky suspicion that Kang is more equivalent to the Loki of Phase 1, only controlling what he can so to avoid inevitable bigger threats of Beyonders long-term in MC you yeah it could be i think there's also different variants and versions of kang and i think you could see multiple versions of kang on secret wars and i think one of those versions will be iron lad yeah that's right it's about to get crazy uh lewis says nothing wrong with multiversal cameos as long as you don't make the movie around just that yeah no no no, for sure that's the thing it's got to be balanced you know what i mean fifi says i actually think we'll see avengers vs x-men before secret wars you could be right you could be right about that uh i think after secret wars we'll have young avengers that could be the case but young avengers seems to be rolling too i think we'll get a lot of answers this year at san diego comic-con that's what i think but yes to both sean Gaines, welcome back to the nerd avengers brother always good to get you back in the tower Always good to get you back in the tower. Welcome back to the tower. Kendall says, I missed the stream, but uploaded the Fantastic Four in the multiverse vid. It's an easy way to explain Reed's role without 616 plot holes. Check it out. I will check it out, bro. And thank you so much for that. And uh, Sneak says, you think we will see Secret Invasion in the MCU soon? Uh, yeah, I mean, the Secret Invasion show is, is literally a thing. It'll be different than the book, though. Um, but yes, I think that and maybe even the Marvels will deal with that. Uh, how about Galactus and Silver Surfer in the MCU? Possible before Secret Wars or that wouldn't work? Uh, and also, welcome back, Feed. Welcome back. Make your way around the tower. Your locker's still there. Uh, Sneakza, let me see here. So Galactus and Silver Surfer. I think before Secret Wars is the way to do that. I, I think that probably uh, that will be what's involved in um, the Fantastic Four movie. I would probably assume that, uh, like, I assume that Doom's going to be involved in it somehow, but I wouldn't be surprised if, like, it ends up with a team up and they're both trying to fight Galactus or something like that. Like, I would like that quite a bit, right? So, um,. Yeah, I, I'd say before. I'd say before. And Everett says, uh, with a $10 holla, making the MCU the 616 universe when we know... Oh, shit. Hang on. Uh, when we know in the multiverse we'll have comic universes, this ended it for me. Gonna be sailing the seas instead of sitting in the big screen. Wait, what? Making the MCU the 616 universe when we know in the mul when we know in the multiverse we'll have a comic universe... This ended it for me. Well, that is a really weird thing to get stuck on, but that is your right to do so. And, uh... See ya! Like, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you, bro. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's really weird to me. 
uh, to get that upset about that kind of a thing. But who knows? Maybe people feel that same way about my take at the end of Kenobi. Darth Princess says, do you think Wanda is alive? And if so, how? Uh, yeah, I think she's alive. And how? Um, either she like kind of just teleported herself out of there or somebody else teleported her out of there. I'm not sure. But yeah. Yeah. I think that uh, something like that is probably on the table. Um, I mean, look, there's just a lot of evidence, Princess, that... Uh, <laughs> and it's something I never thought I'd say. Uh, listen, Princess, there's a, there's a lot of evidence that they're going to do that. They're going to bring her back. And I think that little... Whatever that was with the red magic at the end was, was sort of to tease that out. And there's a lot of reliable insiders that say that um, she's doing her own solo project. So, like, there's there's evidence for that. You know what I mean? Yo, Josh, check out that Top Gun Maverick Rotten Tomatoes score. Will do. Let me check it out. Bro, I'm hearing nothing but great things about it. People are raving about uh, Top Gun. Let's see. Let's check it out. Oh, wait, that's the OG one. How do I... Okay, Top Gun Maverick. Here we go. Hot damn! 98%? I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Hot damn! That's pretty good, huh? Wow. This is this is cool. I like this one right here. This guy says the ultimate Gen X dad fantasy in which a 50 something uh, gets to outsmart and outperform the younger generation's best and brightest. Let's go fuck them kids. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm all about it. I hope uh, I hope he besmirches TikTok in the film as well. Let's go. <laughs> Arthur's like, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. That's fun, man. That's that's kind of fun. Yes, the guy's from uh, Moon Knight, right? Right, Arthur? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know what I mean? I'm just kidding, guys. Relax. Hey, it's just, It's all for fun. You know, it's all in fun. Uh, what makes an incursion happen, says Darth Princess? It's not 100% clear uh, what, but it's, I guess, like, the way Reed explained it in the film was when two realities come too close together. So, perhaps um, the dreamwalking, they seem to be afraid of an incursion for them even being there. So, other people from different universes being there. It seems like what... Um, it seems that uh, Christine Palmer, the one from the Baxter Foundation, is also saying that they can't be together because that would cause incursions. So probably when something from a reality is not supposed to be there, right? That's kind of my take on it. Old Dirty Squirt says Wanda would have killed Tom Cruise Iron Man like she did Ultron. It's true. It's true. Uh, this guy says, Josh, you're the most inconsistent reviewer ever. Uh, many W's, many L's. Also love you, though. Well, thanks for the love. And also, fuck you. <laughs> Doom and Wanda's solo project. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be pretty to cheer? Uh, okay, guys. I gotta get out of here mostly because I am starving. I'm very hungry. I hit the gym earlier. I'm still on my fast. I am real hungry. So, uh, gotta get on out of here, okay? Arthur... Uh, yes, sir. Moon Knight, F4, baby, and Papa, shut your mouth. Okay, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Look, Arthur belongs to the younger gen. You know, they're not all bad. They're not all bad. You know, there's some good ones. There's some good ones out there. All right, everybody. Much love to you all. Uh, appreciate you all. Appreciate the support. Um, the love. Okay, Dan the Man, last one. Uh, morning, Josh. Waldron said his Star Wars film isn't connected to any previous films or show. In my opinion, a film about... A will in World Between Worlds or Tor Valum team up with the Sun and Talon remake the galaxy would do numbers. Watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Oh, man. Vito, much love. Vito, much love. I hope you're well. I hope you're well. Um, Dan, let me explain. Uh, I, I don't know what it means, but I'm 
pretty fucking intrigued by that statement. When he said it's not connected to anything, I was like, let's go. This is exactly the kind of shot in the arm that I think Star Wars needs. Like, the problem with, and look, of course I want to see the Kenobi show. But the problem with continuing on with that formula is that you are trapping yourself in a place where you're going to be at odds with some fans uh, and you're reworking canon, you're revisiting stuff. Like, the nostalgia trip needs to end at some point. You know what I mean? The prequels were controversial, but they allowed Star Wars to expand. Can you imagine what Star Wars would be like without the prequels? It'd be all TIE Fighters and X-Wings, white stormtroopers, black Imperial officers. You know, like, it would be all that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we need to, we need to, Star Wars needs to evolve. You know what I mean? And uh, I think Michael and Kevin are the, are the men for the job. But that's just one man's opinion. Okay. Much love to you all, okay? I will see you guys real soon. As I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day. And I'll see you in the next video. Everybody gone? <coughs> mm, pardon me. Did everybody leave, 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 leave? Thirty-six minutes ago, Michael Waldron talked about Deadpool and how, yeah, they talked about putting him into Multiverse of Madness. I think over time, many of the things that were rumored and that people were talking about will probably be proof to be real and not ass grabs, which is good. But, you know, there will always be those people that were like, but it didn't happen, you know. Crazy. By the way, t total side note, I hope all of you are okay. Uh, the markets right now are absolutely crazy, especially crypto. Some really wild stuff happened in crypto. And so I hope you guys are all okay. I hope you're diversified. And I hope uh, you're not feeling too much of that pain. It's weird times right now, but uh, yeah, just want to say that and hope you're all doing well. Uh, much love to you all. Um, yeah. Uh, Picture Peter says, LMA, jo Josh was wrong. Why do you never show humility? I always show. Uh, what are you talking about? I'm, so, I'm, like, wait, wait, so, I'm like the most humble guy. Let me tell you about how fucking humble I am, okay? I'm the most humble. I'm the most humble. Okay, so don't get, let me, I'm a, you don't even know, okay? There's like, there's like lists of humble people out there, and I'm the most, okay? Shit. God, hey. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's right. I just, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. All right, everybody. Much love. Much love to everybody. Um, Vito, it's good to see you, bro. We'll see you. See you soon. All right, take care, guys.